Well, it's fun to meet all of you. And thanks for telling me a little bit about your units. It, it really is going to be fun. This collaborative, it, as I was just mentioning to Patty, if you have that one group or that one person, we really support that. And that's always what Synapse was about from the beginning was the singular champions or the small groups of champions who just felt alone and were really doing this huge lift of whether that was implementing small babies or implementing cooling or implementing AEEG. That's really how we started with the conferences was to support you small soldiers by yourself doing these big jobs. And what we love about the collaborative is just how many of us are going to be able to share. And I know for myself, I love having my friends on speed dial. And what we're going to do is just put all of us on speed dial for each other so that we can share resources. We're going to share with you what we already have, but in return for, with the collaborative, if like we were just talking to, um, I believe it was Andrea who was saying she did for her DNP, she did the golden hour. And so she nailed that in her project and probably learned so much that we can learn from her. Again, I think this is what I'm really psyched about for the collaborative and the fact that as you all know, it's really nursing focused. And I say that with full respect of our neonatology colleagues and our other disciplines, but that we know that the nursing lane is different and our practice is our practice. And by creating a nursing collaborative, we want to bring what we have back to our group. Of course, we like if there's something that needs input from others, but there's so much that we do that is just nursing focus and nursing scope of practice. And that's what this is going to be about. It's going to be focused on bedside empowerment and really nursing focus. So I'm, I'm super psyched about that. And, and we're trying really hard to stay in that lane. And we're not going to talk about should you intubate or should you do bubble or should you this like those are medical decisions that we can have input in and we can and participate in locally as our nursing practice. It's okay, once that decision is made, then what do we do to optimize that baby's experience? And that's really, I think, trying to differentiate and explain the rationale while we're like, this is a nursing collaborative because we have a nursing practice that we want to elevate, that we want to empower our colleagues um, and all of that. We have 14 clinical advisors on the collaborative who are all ready to be mentors, to be friends, to be phone a friend who are here, who are already experts in this area and have lended their expertise to the collaborative. And then we'll be having all of you who are participants in the collaborative, you know, giving your input as well. So it's going to just be a massive powerhouse. I mean, I, I just can't wait to see what all of you, all of you create. So let's dive into the slides for a few minutes. And it was really fun to chat with all of you and, and get to know you a little bit better. And it, again, I just, I'm so excited about this I'm, and I'm glad that you're here just to learn more. And again, I can't wait for you all to be part of this. All right. So as we all agree, every little thing we do matters to the small baby. And when we're thinking about implementing change and care and education, what we've come up with in our small baby course, if you haven't taken that before, I want to give you this kind of analogy we use in the course, and that is the Rubik's Cube. So if you think about a small baby or any baby in utero, for the most part, that is their their best place to be, to grow and to thrive. And so we think of them as a Rubik's cube that's completely solved. And so we love that all the sides are in alignment. We call all the sides our body systems and we'll get to that here in a second. So they're all aligned. But as soon as you hit the delivery room and you have that cord clamped and you are moving on to your resuscitation, we have scrambled the Rubik's cube. We have mixed up all the systems. We have had to make compromises in one area to be successful in another. But what's helpful to teach others is just how important the relationships are between the sides, amongst the sides, and that we wanna help nurses, especially our newer nurses, and many of you are probably challenged with a staff that is getting younger and newer. It's hard for them to understand how all the pieces fit together. And then when you realize that this Rubik's Cube has six sides and nine squares, that's 54 variables, 
you start to be able to explain why this is a difficult baby to care for or why this is difficult for us to manage because we have all these little variables that we're managing. And so we really found it helpful to, to think of the baby as a Rubik's cube and that as you make changes to one side, you make changes to fluids, you might have to make changes to your respiratory management, you make changes to humidity, you might have to make changes to fluids and changes to vent. And it's also if you're initiating weaning or changes on one side, knowing that's going to have an implication other places, then it's okay. Is today the day to be weaning that and pushing feeds? Like we can think of, okay, I'm making this switch, but maybe it's not a good day to do that switch. So does that kind of make sense how you can imagine the Ruby's cube moving together? And of course, if we don't have a plan at all, then it just all, all melts down. And that's how many of us feel in our NICUs where we're just scrambling when we get these babies and you may not have them every day. And so having a protocol that's nursing driven that the nurses can just open up and can follow that's custom for your unit is going to be a game changer. It's going to be save you so much time and stress and people will be on the same page. Even if you use the tools just as audits to go back and to do education, these tools are going to really help you a lot. So again, when we think about our NICU cube or our small baby cube, we have the different sides. We have thermoregulation and skin, respiratory, nutrition, brain, infection, and family. And thinking about all of those things together and what are the best practices that we can offer. And so again, as you think about the cube and a side, and again, having these nine squares, what we've done is we've, we've broken down the continuum, of, the continuum of care into seven of the tiles. And then we have this relationship, like I was talking about, as you move one side and you affect the other, we really want to focus on that, those relationship pieces, and then strategies for staff education. So whether or not you're thriving in this area or you're challenged in this area, we want to give you resources and you can contribute to the resources too about how can we teach our colleagues or our staff about the importance of this side of the Rubik's Cube. And so we break the, the system down into critical time. So we have the delivery room is step one. So when we focus on thermal regulation in March, we are going to take a deep dive and you can either audit or implement the checklist that we provide. Or if you have to take it back to a committee, then you can start those wheels moving. So we're going to focus on delivery room. Then we're going to focus on, because that's one aspect of care, right? We have to manage that. Then we have the golden hour. Then we have that first kind of shift. Then we have that first couple days. Then we have that first week, the second week, and the third week. So we are providing you with a care plan that is divided by these seven these seven steps. And so you may find in your unit, depending on how many people are engaged in your small baby project, you may only be able to focus on one side and one square, and it may take you six months to get your delivery room systems down. And if you identify that as your primary issue, that might be your focus. But if you want to just say, we want to just roll this out globally across the first two weeks of life or three weeks of life or whatever works for your unit, we're going to give you the care plan template for the bedside. And then again, we're going to give you some resources that we'll be able to teach to this concept of the relationships. And then we'll give you like a fact sheet if you want to do like a quickie in service, but we're going to provide that so you can go back and share with your team. So that's how we've broken down the content and every month's systems. So that's what brings us to the collaborative. And as you have probably seen online or in the emails, we have a year long schedule. January is going to be our kickoff. So that's finding your baseline and maybe just really figuring out your goal for the year, where you think you're headed. And then starting in February, we're going to deep dive into all the systems, but focus on that delivery room and admission. So whether that's getting your top down, whether that's tracking your first hour temps, not just an admission temp and really using your bed and your equipment for doing better trending, just the things that we care about at the bedside and really understanding how all those things fit together. And I know that golden hour, like Andrea was saying, she did a whole project for her DMP on that. That would be awesome. We want to hear about that. So that's February, March, we're going to hit into thermal reg. April is skin. And we have a Dr. Medea Esser on our board as one of our expert bonus lectures. And she's going to come in and talk to us about policies and products. 
and protection. She's a PhD nurse practitioner who specializes in skin. May is all about infection. And we have some groups who are doing ultrasound guided IV insertion by nurses and how they're really improving their number of pokes. And just that, again, trying to go back to what can nurses do? And if that's not something you're doing yet in your unit, you can learn a little bit about what they're doing for that, because maybe that would be a strategy for you. So Signs of sepsis, especially going back to our younger nurses who are newer to the NICU, who need to understand those subtle signs of sepsis. We have some toolkits that you can use that are some NICU guided ones that give the nurses at the bedside language to communicate with the physicians about this baby is going south. <laughs> Come here. The newer nurses, they need to still understand how to communicate with our physician colleagues and how to then present the data, that gut feeling they have, or those signs that they're picking up, but they're not speaking that language of the physician to get the attention. So we found some tools that will help with that. That was created by Jane Solomon, a nurse practitioner down in Tampa. So we're going to use that signs of sepsis. June and July are going to be all about the brain, my favorite topic in the world. So whether that's IVH bundle, pain, stress, like what Shannon was just talking about, like what are we using for sedation or not sedation, or are we sedating all babies that are intubated, all just dealing with what are the things we can do as nurses, and then what are the things that we maybe need to advocate for change around. Of course, July will be all about the sensory system. We're going to share some information around the sense program and how you might integrate that into your neuro NICU or into your small baby program. August is a break. Oh, we get to take a break and reflect and see where we're at and maybe see how far we've come. What are the things we've learned? And then plow forward through the fall, September, October, November with respiratory nutrition and family-centered care. December will be a little bit of a time for us to present to each other and share what we've been doing. And we'll do our final call in January of 2025. And that'll be more about sustainability. Where do you go from here? February 2025, there is a NeoBrain conference in Anaheim, California. And depending on how many of you decide to attend that, we may decide to do like a pre-conference there where we could meet together in person. So that's the schedule. I think mostly we're going to have them at 9 a.m. Pacific. And anyways, you can take a screenshot and these are pretty much locked in. It's pretty much the first Wednesday of every month, except January is what you should uh, plan for. Of course, we'll record them and all of that if you can't make it. So the calls will be 90 minutes. We're going to start with that first 10 to 15 minutes of just introductions and sharing about how the previous month went. Then we're going to do 30 minutes on the education related to the care plan and the checklist that we're sharing with you for that month. Then we're just going to dive into Q&A where you guys can ask questions and like just pick each other's brains until we don't have any more questions. We're going to then talk about what are the next steps for the next month. And then we're going to do some just Zoom breakout rooms where you can network with each other, share ideas, and just get some, just some community feeling that way. But I really want it to be low education, like didactic time and high interaction time. We're trying to keep it really 30 minutes for the topic and to just go through everything. And the rest of the time is just interactive, collaborative time. Like I said, we have 14 advisors and we have Jane, Jess, and Katie from St. Joe's in Tampa, who actually created a small baby binder. And they have then generously given us access to their unbranded version of that to share in the collaborative as a base, as a foundation of a place to start. And of course, like I said, we hope to hear from all of you of the things that the tools that you, you've created, and they want the feedback about their binder. What's missing? What should we do better? And all of that. So they're um, definitely really high contributors to this. And then we have a series of individuals who are either leaders in their unit, ma managers, CNSs, educators who have been involved in our previous one conference. So we've got Megan from San Diego. She is a nurse manager. Sharon is a supervisor and NICU nurse from Northern California. Lauren Heimels, the clinical nurse specialist at CHOP in Philly. We have Natalie Hunt, who is a neonatal nurse practitioner, just finished her um, DNP pro program. Charlotte, the, the clinical coordinator for the neuro NICU at Johns Hopkins. Rochelle Sai is the clinical nurse specialist at Sharp Mary Birch in San Diego. She's in charge of their small baby program and their neuro NICU. And then we have Allison Thomas. She's the clinical supervisor, assistant nurse manager at Huntington. She's been beta testing the binder for us for the last few months. We have Shannon Tinkler, who is a clinical nurse specialist in Northern California. Bev Walty, clinical nurse specialist at Children's in Orange County. 
Amanda Williams, clinical nurse specialist at Cedars in Los Angeles, and Diane Wilson, who is the nurse practitioner lead at Sick Kids in Toronto of their neurocritical care program. So we have a diverse group. I can talk about a powerhouse of phone of friends. These will be the individuals coming to our collaboratives, leading them, sharing what they're doing, sharing their research, sharing their QI templates, you name it, generously giving of their time and, and they're just their expertise. And I know all of you have things that you can share with us too. So we can't wait to do that. Um, the idea would be that we have a shared folder, an online cloud folder, where we put up the 21-day templates for each system for that month. We then give you those bedside resources if you want to post them or put them in a resource guide or use them in your unit, however that works. And then share back with us what's working in your unit. What have you created? What checklists and things like that? We're going to have a Facebook group for people in the collaborative, and that will be a place where you can network between calls. It will be private for us. And post questions and give input and share. At the end of the day, we really want to take all these sides and all these squares and all these variables and just give you a roadmap for the best care possible in your unit and give you that head start. So if you're still trying to build out your program, this is going to just give you so much head start. There are infinite combinations of this and different ways that you can implement it. So you can take on one side, one square, or the whole cube. It just depends on what your focus for you, your unit needs to be. It's a process. It is a big project. It is a big process. So we just want you to give yourself grace, understand that you may run up against roadblocks that, that keep you from moving forward. But I know that as nurses, we can really move fast when we need to, and that so many times we're waiting on our other colleagues to agree. Like Shannon was just talking about that, agreeing on what sedation we're going to do. It's a great conversation, but what are we doing today? The babies are here today. And so what are the things that we can do in our lane and keep moving our practice forward? So that's where I really am excited about this. The goal by the end of the year is when you have all these resources is you will have a custom resource binder. I'll say binder just because I'm old, but binder. So whether that's digital or whether that's paper or whether that's a spreadsheet, I don't know how you're going to do it in your unit, what will work, but you will have those resources and you can then implement them. You're going to have staff education, bedside care plans, bedside checklists, risk assessment tools, charts, calculation, tips, tricks, resource guides, rounding, report. Like we're going to give you A to Z of the stuff that is like the essence of nursing care. So that is the SBNQCC in a nutshell and super psyched about it and excited to have you all. So anyways, hopefully that answers most of your questions, but I'll, I'll stop my screen share and we can have a conversation about any part of that you'd like. I love the organization of it. I, I think the Rubik's Cube is brilliant. Jane Solomon's brain is just unending, yeah. full of amazing things. And I love that. I love that. The whole organization of it, the six pieces, the all the sides. I think it's yeah. fantastic. I can't wait. Thanks, Shannon. I guess the other thing is just to tell you about pricing. I think most of you know, because we've been sending emails. So the $500 deal for, for individual participants is still 500. You can then bring a friend for 300. So that brings it down to 400 for both of you. If you have a partner in crime, I highly recommend having at least one partner in crime. We love that, right? We love having our dynamic duos wherever we are. So if you have a friend, that might be a great option. If you have a bigger group, a group of five or more, then you'll want to take advantage of the, the group offer that we have that'll stay active until the end of the year, which will be five participants for 1500. That brings it down to 300. The other thing to note is that each of the 90 minute calls will also have a CE option, nursing CE option. So you'll also get continuing education credit for being involved in the collaborative. So it'll be, what would that be? 18, almost 18 hours is a pretty good deal for most people too. Yeah. So if just the CEs alone can entice you, let alone all the other worksheets and stuff. Um, and then as far as payment and stuff from the hospital, if they do approve, all we need for you to get like signed up is just that you have that proof of the, the PO approved. And we know it takes 30 days, 90 days, 120 days to get it checked. And we won't make you wait on starting until we get those. We know those things take time. That's not anything that you can control. So we never make staff wait for that when we're 
when we have the approval and it's just a matter of just getting through all the paperwork. Any other questions? I know, this is Andrea. Uh, I know it's focused towards bedside nursing. I am a nurse practitioner, but I want to provide the education for the bedside okay. nurses. We've had a lot of turnover in our unit. And so I hope I can provide input from the medical standpoint, but yeah. also gather information from everybody about education for the bedside nurses as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think we've got at least for nurse practitioners on the advisory board. So even if we make a little kind of subgroup of NPs who are doing exactly that, who are being that liaison, right? Between the medical team, you can see that hat, you live that hat, but you know how important your input is and just your guidance and leadership at the bedside to teach another nurse. Same, I agree. I think our NPs are a phenomenal partner for bedside nursing. They're really like yeah. the perfect go between, between obviously physicians and the bedside staff. And there's so many things we need to partner on, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think your role will, that the program will, will be suited well to your role too. Okay. Thank you. There is actually another nurse practitioner that will be joining. So there will be two of us. Oh, great. That's going to be fun. Again, partner in crime. Got to have them. Yeah. Anything else? Any other questions? We're always available. You can go on our website. You can send in a chat message if you want to respond to any of the emails of, hey, Kathy, I thought about this question later. Please don't hesitate. I see all the emails. I do have help answering them sometimes, but I see everything. And especially if it's a question related to this, they're all getting funneled to me. We're here to support you to get the tools you need and to get involved if this, if this is, makes sense for you. Just want to be here to help you. Any final questions? All right. Keep in touch and let me know if you need anything. If you need an invoice, if you need a quote, any of that stuff, we can, the team can pull those together and send them out to you. Anything else? Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good sleep. Thank y'all so much. All right. See you soon. I hope. Have a good day, everybody. Bye.